Hello everyone, episode number zero. This one's going to be the basic setup of the server side for uh, the API we're going to build for the user authentication system. So in this part, nothing crazy. We're going to just set up uh, everything about Babel for make use of the latest JavaScript, ES6 and stuff like that. We're going to also set up uh, Express and Mongoose too in a bit about the, the folder structure. So uh, for this project, well, you're gonna need to have one folder, like I have right there, and you're gonna create another folder called server. You're gonna, after that, go inside your server, and we're gonna open a text editor from here. So I'm gonna open my uh, Visual Studio Code with my te text editor. After that, where you're at, at, at the same point of me, you're gonna need to, uh, to go back to your uh, terminal, and you're gonna run yarn init, on this uh, on this project and dash w uh, dash uh, y to make sure that you're gonna just do everything yes or go with npm and do the same npm unit. So now for starting this project, we're gonna need some dependency. So like I told you, you're gonna need to have some Node.js knowledge, but here you need to make sure that you're gonna have two kind of dependency: the dependency and the dev dependency. Remember that. The dependency is the one we're gonna run on your uh, virtual server, uh, server when you're gonna push to production. So why I told you that? It's because I have some student who uh, came to me, get some problem with like Heroku or AWS or something like that, where they have some error about, hey, you don't have this package, you don't have this package, and you don't have this package. It's because they don't run the dev dependency when they install, they just install the dependency. So just make sure that every package your app need for running or inside the dependency. This is just a quick tips. So now we're gonna start with uh, express body parser cross env. Also we're gonna need uh, mongoose. So that's gonna be inside the dependency. If you use npm that's gonna be npm dash dash save install and all this thing. Make sure this is all in dependency. After that, we're gonna need in the dev dependency, bab, uh, Babel preset env, Babel CLI, Babel plugin transform object rest spread. So here they are just Babel set up to make sure we're gonna work with the latest ES6 feature. So install that and make sure that was in dev dependency with the slash uh, the added just there. After that, we're gonna also need in the dev dependency, Morgan, who's gonna be a tool for us to um, uh, for running uh, to to see which API call we did is is really going in dev uh, environment. After that, we're gonna also install ESLIN and ESLIN config, and I'm gonna install mine because I know how it works and also it's really easy to set up. So you can go with Airbnb and stuff like that if you want. Why I do this is because I think in a tutorial you need ESLIN when you go over there because I can make some mistake and I want to make sure that I get this thing first. So I'm right there in my project. I'm gonna just run a, a generate editor config. So I'm gonna push, uh, so this editor config here, it's a really simple one. It's just a setup to make sure that uh, if someone take my code or something like that, it's gonna just have the this uh, set up for the editor so it's a, a configuration for an editor uh, if you see some of my other tutorial I show you how to use it but here as you can see I'm gonna just I'm gonna use space and I'm gonna use the two in the inside and this is just a, a basic setup after that create another file and we're gonna call this one uh, ESLIN RC this one is gonna take an object with an extent and this one just take equimper so this is the setup for the ESLIN nothing more so ESLIN RC with a dot Extend equimper if you use mine. After that, dot eslin ignore who's gonna be uh, we're gonna just say uh, eslin to ignore the uh, node module uh, folder. We don't want eslin to run on node module. That's it. After that, we're gonna need to install a Babel RC file. So as you see, it's all dot file. So they are configuration files. So it just they are pretty basic to, to set up. The first one, the preset here is gonna be where we're gonna set up the preset env. So we're gonna say env, 
In here, I'm going to say which target I want to uh, go. And I'm going to say I want to go on the node. And I'm going to say 6.10. Uh, because if you want to push to AWS, this is what they're going to ask you. So that I'm going to say plugging. Or I'm going to add another array. And transform object res spread. So this is if you want to have the uh, ES6 spread operator. And here, I'm going to say use built ins. Use built-ins, yeah, true. That's it. So this is the setup of the Babel. So just make sure that you follow, and if you didn't follow here, I'm gonna push the code on the repo, and I'm gonna put the repo on uh, the, the, the GitHub, on the description. So after that, we're gonna create another folder called SRC. So this is where I'm gonna put my source uh, code. Also, I forget to install one thing, and this is Nodemon. We're going to install that in dev dependency. So for the one who came, we never did uh, Node.js. It just, if you don't use Node Mon, you're going to always need to restart your server for having the change. No, no one going to watch for us. Go to your package JSON and create a script object. And we're going to say dev. Why right here, we're going to say cross env node env that development. So we just say finally, this code is gonna run on development mode, and you're gonna see why I do this in a moment. After that, yeah, I'm gonna say node mod dash dash exec babel node src that index that js. I know it's pretty weird if you it's exec first. It's pretty weird if you never seen that, but it's kind of simple. You just say here that's gonna be in development. We run node mod and we exec babel. We're gonna just compile the code and we go over. SRC index. So we're going to create this index line right there. So now we can use the ES6 import from uh, Express. Here I'm going to just say uh, a really, uh, I'm going to just go really simple with a cons app equal Express. And after that, I'm going to just say app that listen on 3000 just for now. Here, if I have an error, if I have an error, I'm going to throw my error. Else. Uh, else, I'm going to say uh, console log server running on port 3000. Like that. So now, for seeing if everything's work, you go to your terminal and you run yarn dev or npm run dev. Looks like everything is work. Go to uh, if you have Postman with uh, an extension, or you can use the Google extension too. It just Postman. It's really awesome. You should download that. I'm gonna put the link in the description. If you go to local host 3000 now, and I do a get request with by doing command enter, and I get 404, and that's perfect. I mean, yeah, 404 it's bad, but that's perfect for us. I just mean that work right now. So we have the basic setup of just Express. So we make Express running. We make sure that Express now it's able to run. So now we're gonna just module a bit the, uh, the code. We're gonna create a config folder inside the source folder where we're gonna create a file called constant.js. Here it's a file where I'm gonna put all my constant. The constant is the variable we're gonna never move for the app. And I need that all around my app. So we're gonna see that in a moment. So I'm going to create a, a, an object called default config, who's going to be the default configuration of my app. It's going to be an object here. I'm going to say port, where I'm going to say process that env that port, and I'm going to say 8000. Uh, 8, Why I do this? It's because when you're going to run on a Roku or something like that, they're going to have their own port number. So by doing this, you make sure that in local, I'm going to run 8000, but when I'm going to push to production, I'm not going to get this kind of problem. After that, what I'm going to do, it's I'm going to create another object called development, who here is going to be uh, finally an object where I'm going to have a DB URL inside that. Inside this one, I'm going to say the MongoDB local host. slash user authentication, and I'm going to say dev, like that. 
So this object here is gonna have a DB URL. If you follow what I try to do, it's it's because I'm gonna have another object maybe called production where this one's gonna be example production. Like that. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a function called get env, who here gonna get a an environment, and here finally gonna return, you're gonna uh, sorry, I should say uh, config. I make a mistake. Like this. I just make a little mistake. Sorry about that. So we're gonna go production like this. And now here finally we just return the config with the env inside that. So as you see here, this thing can be production or development and it's gonna return this object by doing uh, um, bracket notation. And now here we can export default an object where I'm gonna spread the default config and I'm gonna also spread the get env but this one's gonna get the env by doing uh, process that env that node env. So if you should follow what I've tried to do, it's by gaining this environment variable right there, development. So if you match development, I'm gonna get this thing. So just to make sure all is working, what I'm gonna do, it's here I'm gonna import the constant file we just built. After that, I'm gonna change this 3000 by doing constant that, constant that, Something looks like is weird right now. Looks like I have one error. Default config port. Hmm, pretty strange, and my Visual Studio didn't get it. Now we're gonna see, so here I have that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say constant that port. We need backtick for that. That's it. And now 8,000. So it looks like it worked. Perfect. This is what we want. And also I'm gonna console log the environment. So that's gonna be easier for you. In environment, we're gonna say process that env that no env. And now we're gonna see right there development maybe you're gonna need to restart by doing your own dev again but now you're gonna work and now we see it's development so now we get all the setup of the development here if you don't want to have this error you can just add the ESLint disable line of both line because my ESLint told you told I don't want to have a console log so this is what uh, you can do for disable this thing or you can disable that at the top by doing uh, ESLint Disable no console, and after that, you remove this thing, and now that's gonna still work like that. So now we have did the config of uh, the express, but now we missed to do the mongoose. So we're gonna create another file inside the config called a DB. This one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna import a mongoose from mongoose. We're gonna import the constant file we have just created. So this is an object. We're gonna set up mongoose promises as asked by the docs. Everything I do here, it's it's the docs ask it. So in here, I'm gonna do a try and a catch because that can be a problem when you're gonna run on uh, when you're gonna do testing. Etc. So I just set, always set up this thing. So I'm gonna say mongoose connect. So I'm gonna have my constant that db db URL, and here I'm gonna just say use mongoose client true. And here I'm gonna have my error, but I don't need that. What I'm gonna say it's mongoose that create connection constant that db URL use mongoose client true. So here finally you just say, hey, try to connect. If I have an error, just create a connection finally. So if it doesn't work, create a connection. And after that, I'm gonna say mongoose that connection here at the bottom. Where I'm gonna say that once. So once. So when that happened one time, so when it's open, I'm gonna console log mongo db running. 
on error so when I have an error I have the error right there and I'm gonna just finally throw the error nothing crazy here and I can disable my line right there so now for make sure that's gonna work I'm gonna just need to import it and because I don't want to use a variable I can just say import slash config slash DB nothing more now if I go to my terminal I can I'm supposed to see MongoDB running and we have it that's perfect this is I mean this is what you really want uh, to have in your um, uh, that just means that finally that works so so now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna just set up to the uh, the middleware it's gonna be pretty simple we're gonna just create here inside the config another middleware file where in this one we're gonna take the body parser from body parser and now here I'm going to create a variable also create called isDev. So the isDev is going to be finally just a boolean value who's going to return me if the environment variable process env no env equal no env uh, development. So if it's test or prod, it's going to be false. Why I'm doing this is because here now I can export default an arrow function who I'm going to pass my app, who's going to be my express instance, where I'm going to do app that use body parser that json for the one who don't know what is body parser it's a way to parse always your rec body you don't want to do json string fi on everything that's gonna be crazy you don't want to do this so now here you uh, body parse also the url encoded because i want to use that in uh, postman so i'm gonna say extend true and now here i'm gonna just say if is in dev dependency I'm gonna take my Morgan equal require Morgan here. You cannot do an import when you do the import it This is at the top after that you need to do inside a require this way And now I'm gonna just say add that use Morgan And I'm gonna pass dev Like that I think I go quick. I, I know you just disco or bullet plate if you are beginner in node.js this stuff you supposed to like Maybe that don't gonna make sense, but more and more you're gonna see the code more and more that's gonna uh, make more sense. It's just ball play. I don't want I don't want to lose time on just the setup of the code. So here inside the index, we're gonna just import the middleware from config and middleware. And now finally, after the app is built, we pass the app. That's it. And now we're gonna make sure everything still work. Go to Postman and do another get. on 8000 maybe and now here if you work we see now the get with a 404 in yellow that's cause of morgan this is what morgan do when we pass the morgan dev here so if you don't understand what happened now it just we create the instance of the application we create a function here we're gonna take this instance and we finally do what we need to do for putting middleware because they are middleware but it parts out some middleware and morgan too and we say app that use and we pass them there. It's just a way to abstract the middleware. That's it. So that, that's it for this episode. I'm gonna push the code together. I hope you're gonna enjoy. Again, the repo is gonna be in the description. And we're gonna jump on the next one where we're gonna set up the user uh, model and the user registration with the service and everything. And I think if you follow my tutorial, you're gonna maybe like the new way of my services uh, where I get that from other language. So I hope you enjoy and we're going to talk later. Have a good uh, end episode and bye.